Today we're going to be talking about being the salt of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we love you truly. Thank you. Thank you for this day. Help us to prove our love to you every single day. Help us not to be selfish or complacent or lazy, but help us to prove our love in every possible way so that you know without a shadow of a doubt that we are people who love you. And help us to be the salt of the earth. Help us to affect our atmosphere wherever we go in a positive way for you and your behalf as ambassadors. And Father, give us the strength to do so, to be bold, and help our words to always be seasoned with salt as well, Father, knowing how we address every situation. We thank you for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Being the salt of the earth is no easy task. It's hard sometimes. It's hard especially when this world is so offended. Anybody ever heard of somebody getting offended before? Anybody heard of somebody getting offended over something that doesn't even make sense? People just get offended over every little thing so we've got to the place to where we just don't even want to talk sometimes because somebody might get offended. But when you become a Christian, you have to realize that you're just going to have to offend some people. And you're not doing it on purpose. You're not doing it because you like offending people. You're doing it because you know that you have to speak the truth. And sometimes that truth is something somebody else don't want to hear, so it offends them. But you can never be scared to present the truth. You have to present it no matter what. So you have to pray for boldness. Let me be the salt of the earth. Did you know that salt used to be a currency? Salt used to be used as a form of currency or payment to soldiers. In the Roman army, they didn't always get paid coins. They got paid in salt. Isn't that strange? Strange used to be a hard thing to come by. But salt was used for so many purposes that people would accept it as form of payment. All right? Times have changed. Now it's the green, right? But nevertheless, salt was used as a currency. And I thought that was a strange thing whenever I came across that. But nevertheless, salt has many purposes. And that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But let's go through some scriptures first. Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? You can't season salt, all right? Salt is the seasoning, right? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Yeah, there are a lot of other purposes for salt, not just for taste. You know, salt can be used as a de-icer. Anybody know that? Yeah. Trampled by men. Nevertheless, we don't need to lose our flavor. We need to make sure that we have passion. That's kind of what he's saying here. You need to have passion for the Lord. Do you have passion for the Lord? Is it evident for everybody to see? Hopefully it is, right? Hopefully you have passion for the Lord. Hopefully you have season in yourself. That you have some taste, you have some flavor. Lord, help us be flavorful today. Mark 9, 49 through 50. For everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Lord, help us to have salt in ourselves. Help us to be salty. I don't know if you've ever had anything that didn't have salt before. Let's say, let's just call it a boiled egg, okay? 
Have you ever eaten a boiled egg with no salt? We got some eggs going on. That's right. It don't taste good without the salt in there, right? What about something else? You ever had something else that just needed some more salt? Watermelon. Oh, watermelon. Yeah, okay. Watermelon without salt. There's some things, though, that just need salt, right? That's why salt and pepper are on most tables at restaurants, right? Because they know that people like to make sure they got their seasons right. And sometimes people under-season things, and it just doesn't have as much flavor as if it was to have that salt involved, right? So help us, Lord, to make sure that we have enough salt. Help us to make sure that we have that involved in our lives and in our walk with you that people notice that we represent you everywhere we go. That it doesn't have to be questioned. That people just know that we are Christians. Luke 14, 34-35 Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dung hill. The poo-poo grounds. Isn't that a funny word, dunghill? But men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I don't want to be thrown out. I want to make sure I have enough salt in myself, enough saltiness to where I go and I affect the atmosphere. Wherever I go, people are going to know that's a Christian right there. Right? Right? Because I have taste. I have flavor. And people know and can notice. Colossians 4, 5-6 Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. Outside of the faith. Redeeming the time. Because time's running out. Anybody notice that? Mm -hmm. Anybody getting older? Where has the time gone? Anybody ever said that before? Yeah. yeah. Well, time flies. Anybody ever heard that one yeah, before? Yeah. Eli, you heard that? I said, you say it all the time. Time flies, man. I was having fun, man. It's already time to go. It's already time to leave. Yeah, it's like one second. Yeah. <clears throat> time, you can never get back. Right. No matter how hard you try, you can never get time back. So we need to know how to redeem the time. With the time that we have left in this life, how are we going to best use it for serving the Lord? Because really, folks, that's why we're here. It's not about serving ourselves, but it's about how can we best serve God. Then he says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. Our speech must have flavor to it, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So, here's an example, folks. You come across somebody who doesn't believe in God. Anybody knows, know anybody in your life who doesn't believe in God? Anybody? All right, we got some that know. You need to know how to redeem the time with those folks. You need to know how to speak with them, to answer them, each one. They are outside of the faith, and you need to know how to walk in wisdom with them. Time is short, so you need to know how to spread the gospel with them. You need to know how to speak to them. Do you need to speak to them with cussing? No. Nope. Do you need to speak to them about things that don't matter? Well, I guess that can happen. But nevertheless, you need to know how to speak to them about God. That is the most important thing. That is the most important thing you can do with folks like that is know how to answer them, know how to talk to them, know how to speak to them with that salt, with the flavor, with the passion, the passion of God. But you got to have it first, right? You got to have the passion first to be able to do it. Let's go to James, our final verses of Scripture tonight, and then we'll go into our little demonstration. James 3, 1-12 through 12. 
My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that, we may, that they may obey us, that we turn their whole body. Anybody ever rode a horse before? Put those little bits in their mouth, and that way you can oh, stop them, steer them a little bit. Look also at ships. Although they are a large, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder in the back. Y'all know that? Anybody know anything about ships or boats? Yeah. You got a little rudder in the back that turns you. Yeah. Wherever the pilot desires or the captain, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Although the tongue is small, just like those other things, it can turn about a lot of situations, good or bad. That's why we got to be careful what we speak, right? We got to be careful how we talk. See how great a force a little fire kindles. Just a little spark into a force can set the whole thing ablaze. Anybody ever seen a forest fire before? Maybe on TV or something. In the tongue is a fire. Ooh. A world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell if you let it. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. Anybody ever tamed, seen something tamed before? There's all kinds of things that are tamed, right? Bears, cats, cats alligators. Anybody ever seen a tame alligator before? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Tame alligators, tame snakes even. All kinds of things can be tamed. But no man can tame the tongue. God can, though. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude or the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these, these things ought not to be so. He's saying, Christians, we should not be doing that. You come to church, you say, God bless you, brother. You go somewhere else and you're cussing them down. That should not be so, brethren. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Basically, you can't have fresh water and salt water coming out at the same time. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. We need to know how to talk to people, folks. We need to know how to sometimes shut that. We need to know how to keep our mouth closed sometimes. If you don't know how to train your mouth yet, keep it closed. That's the best form of action. Did you know that when we get to heaven, it says you will have to give an account of every idle word spoken? Isn't that crazy? Whether you're saved or not, you're going to have to give an account of it. You're going to have to explain yourself. Man, I better watch what I say. Every idle word spoken, every word that is not thoughtfully constructed is an easier way of saying that. Uh, your, your sentence structure, you haven't thought about what you're going to say and you just blurt, blurt out a whole bunch of stuff. There might be some cuss words. There might be some insults. You better be careful because you're going to be held accountable to every idle word spoken. I want to make sure that I watch what I say and know how to speak to people seasoned with salt that has flavor that is palatable that I'm able to bear it right 
that it tastes good. We need to be seasoned with salt because salt has flavor, but also salt has healing properties. Anybody know that? Yep. Salt can be healing. Anybody ever heard that, oh, if you got a cut, you know, hey, rub some salt water on there. Or if you got a sore throat, gargle with salt water. Anybody ever done that before? Canker sores. Canker sores, okay. Salt is also nutritious. Anybody know that? If it's nutritious, anybody want to come up here and taste a little salt? Yeah. <laughs> Eli, you want to come taste some salt? Come on up here. All right, let's come down here. Alyssa, if you could put that next slide up. I want you to lick your palm. Can you do that? Lick your palm. Now hold it out. Now taste that. What's that taste like? Tastes good? But what 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 what, what taste does it taste like? Salty. <laughs> Salty. Right? God made our tongues to be able to taste salt. Isn't that unique? So we like salt because God made us to like salt, didn't he? He made us to where we would like that flavoring. We would be able to notice if something had salt in it or not. God also created salt so that we could match the two together, our tongues and the thing that he created. Isn't that awesome? We can thank God for that this morning, right? Anybody ever eat popcorn before? Do you like popcorn with no salt on it? Most people like popcorn to have some salt in it, right? And some butter. Salty, buttery. Anybody else want to taste some salt? All right. Lick your palm. Oh, we got some people who want some salt. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. That's what I want. Oh. Anybody else? Anybody else? While I got it going. You know, the good thing about this is y'all got salt at home, right? <laughs> In case you forgot what it tastes like. You got salt at home. You want another little salt dusting? All right. Can any, oh, those, that's pretty hard to read up there, isn't it? There's some health benefits to salt. Even sea salt, it says. It's an immune booster. Did you know that? It helps regulate sleep. Man, I better start having a little bit more salt. Prevents muscle cramps and helps improve muscle tone and strength. It regulates blood sugar levels. It's beneficial for diabetics. Anybody diabetic out there? There you go, salt. Helps with nutrient absorption in the intestinal tract. Oh, man, I need some more salt. Provides relief from asthma. Anybody got asthma out there? They have actual salt inhalers. Have you seen those? Where you put salt in it and you just breathe in the salt fumes? How about it? I've tried it before. Clears sinus and lungs. Lowers high blood pressure. It's an antiseptic. Effective in psoriasis treatment. It has alkalizing properties. Anybody who has stomach issues out there? It's a natural exfoliant, a natural deodorant. Wow, how about it? And I bet you there's a lot more things that we don't even know. You know, like I said, it also melts ice. It also makes good for uh, making some homemade ice cream. Anybody know about that? Yes, we've talking about that. Right? And it's a good preservative to keep your foods there long. Yes, there you go. It's a good preservative. It's what? It's a healthy preservative. Yes. There's a lot of things that salt is used for. Pickling. Pickling. But nevertheless, God tells us to be salt of the earth, right? He wants us to 
He wants us to have these types of things. He wants us to go and be healing to our culture. He wants to help. He wants us to go be preserving. He wants us to preserve His Word. He wants us to preserve the good morals. Right? Instead of taking part of the morals that's declining, we need to be a part of the morals that has sustained. If you just ask any elderly person in this room today, things were a lot different back in the 50s, right? Right? It used to be a little bit different back then. Things used to be a little bit more uh, civilized, to say the least. Yeah. Well, just ask your grandparents, all right, bud? Maybe even your mom. She might remember. I'm not sure. When were you born, Chair? Uh, Julie? Where's she at? She's gone. Okay. Nevertheless, we are also supposed to have that flavor I was talking about. You're supposed to have passion in your life. When you go into a place, when you start talking about something, anybody ever had some a conversation with somebody about a sports team? You ever heard passion in their voice? You talk to me about the Cowboys, you'll hear it. Who, who's a Cowboys fan in here? All right, who's a Texans fan? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yesterday was a bad day for y'all, I know. Hey, guess what? I also like the Texans. They're my number two favorite team. Yeah, exactly. Number two. Dallas is always number one, though. You know, obviously, 34 to nothing. But uh, <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. Nevertheless, you get to talking about football or something like that, you can see somebody fired up about it, can't you? People get in fights over things like that, don't they? Because they care about it. We need to care so much about God that we, we get excited about talking about Him. We get excited about talking about the new Scripture. Miss Betty Jean came in and she handed me a Scripture today. Let me see if I can pull it out of my pocket. i got a thousand things in there. She, she got excited. She said, here, have you heard about the blood verse? No, I haven't. She said, Ezekiel 16.6, go check it out. I said, all right. She said, if you got any blood problems, you read that over yourself three times, bada bing, supposed to help you. She didn't say bada bing. I'm the one throwing that in there. But anyway, nevertheless, she got excited about it. She wanted to share it with me. And guess what happened now? I've shared it with everybody else. Boom. You see what happens there? Thank you for sharing. Affect your environment in a positive way. Be the salt of the earth. Wherever you go, look for ways that you can talk about God. Spread the gospel. Spread those scriptures. Pray for somebody. Oh, you're having a bad day today? Can I pray with you? They may turn you down, but nevertheless, you offer. You show them that you are being the salt of the earth. Go pray for them later. But then also, they may say, yes, please pray for me. Sometimes that's happened for me. I've noticed that uh, I'll be at a restaurant or somewhere and my waitress, they're, uh, they're having a bad day. Can I pray with you? Sure, pray with me. I pray with them, boom, she's affected. Guess what? Now she might be thinking, hold on. Who can I go pray for now? One of her uh, other co-workers might be having a bad day too. Let me pray with you. And do you see the, the domino effect that starts to take place? Maybe somebody oversees you praying with somebody else and thinks, you know what, maybe I should start doing that too. We need to be a people that affects our atmosphere everywhere we go in a positive way. We are the salt of the earth and we are affecting it with all these nutritional values. All these different positive results come from us. Because we are trying our best to serve the Lord. Because we are being that salt. And if you don't know how, you don't know where to start, pray and ask for God to show you how. And he will. And you will start to get excited about it. You will start to want to share it with others. Hey, check this out. You can do this too. Be that salt. Who wants to be the salt? Me. Lord, help us all to be that salt. Help us to be every bit of what you want us to be. Help us to affect the atmosphere in every possible way that we can in a positive way. 
in a healing way, in a nutritional way, in a flavorful way, in a preservative type of way, Father. Whatever way that You would want us to be, Father, help us to be that true salt that You've called us to be. And if we don't know how to do it, show us. Show us the way. And Father, we truly thank You for everybody who is here today. Thank You for all Your blessings. Thank You that we got to have service today, Father. Thank You for the, for the uh, visitors. Father, let them have gotten something good out of the message today. Father, and we ask that You also please keep us safe as we travel on our way, Father, as we leave here. But Father, please also bless this food to the nourishment of our body whenever we eat. And Father, also please bless us as uh, Mark is going to get baptized today. Father, help us to be encouraged by that. Help him to be encouraged by that. His family to be encouraged by that. Help us to know how we, better, how we best can serve you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.